trophies. Man, oh man, do I love PlayStation trophies. Rudros here. So how much do I love them? Well, as of the, the, the recording of this, my PlayStation level is 529, 62%. I have 211 platinum trophies, 866 gold. I've got a grand total of 1,193. Trophies are fantastic. I believe they were made mandatory around the 2009 year, and I've just I've just been a, a, a trophy hog trying to collect everything I could ever since. You know what I don't like is crappy trophies. Trophies that suck. So today we've got a top 10 trophies that are just absolutely terrible. Ugh, can't stand these trophies at all. So let's get right into it. In no particular order. Number one. The Grinder. What is The Grinder? Oh, gee, I don't know. We're talking trophies like the recent Marvel's Avengers, To the Dark and Back Again, which requires you to clear 50 secret Hydra Hives. That's just way too much. You just will not do that naturally playing the game unless you're playing it to pieces. This could have easily been 10. 10 would have required you to do you know more than a couple and that's more than you would have like done just naturally playing the game so you would have had to do a few extra but there's no reason to do 50 this was the last trophy i needed and i just sat there spamming these things over and over and over again now what's like one of the biggest defenders of this i actually have the resistance to platinum and there's a trophy in that game called killing machine which requires you to get 10,000 multiplayer kills now I played this game so much, I think I got at least pretty good at it. Check this out. A multiplayer match took about 10 minutes, roughly. If I was having a great match, I usually got about 20 to 25 kills. And that was if I was having a great match. You know, sometimes you wouldn't have proper teammates. Sometimes you'd just be playing poorly, and maybe I'd get 7 to 8 kills. So getting 10,000 kills in this game was frankly absurd it was just there was just no reason to make it that grindy you know as so many games have these trophies that you know there is an, a something you would naturally do while playing it and then they just want you to go above and beyond no 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 you gotta do this forever gosh there's a game called hell divers too that i never got the platinum on because there is this trophy mountain out of a molehill where you had to get um, um, like a million kills or a uh, hundred thousand kills, whatever it was. And again, it was just, it was so beyond what you would naturally get during the gameplay. I cannot stand these trophies. Like it just feels like a, a way to just pad the game and like, don't you want to play for an extra 50 hours just to get this one gold? No, I really don't. Number two, multiple playthrough trophies. <laughs> I can't stand it when you have to play through a game multiple times just to get a single trophy out of it. For example, in the recent Final Fantasy VII Remake, you have to play through the game a second time on hard mode. And so you're going through this entire game again, and that's basically the only trophy you'll really be aiming for at that point. Why? Why? It's just such a waste of time. I can't stand trophies like this. Like, I should have the... If I choose to do that, like, if I want to start on normal first and then go through hard mode, okay, that's my choice. But let me just knock it out in one go if I feel like it. Now, there are some versions of this that are, are a little better. For example, the infamous games by Sucker Punch have a, a good and bad morality system. So it's actually kind of interesting to go through on the other side of the karma because... Not only do you get brand new powers and, you know, more variations to the story, usually there are multiple trophies tied for that. So you'll unlock, you know, five, six, maybe ten just for going through on that side. But some of these games will just make you, well, again, you'll only get one or two trophies out of it. Dragon Age Origins somehow both finds that balance and completely craps on it. There are multiple story decision trophies that basically warrants a second playthrough, but what it doesn't warrant is the third playthrough to get whichever character you didn't pick to level 25 or 20, whichever it is. It's frankly ridiculous. Like, you're doing this entire third playthrough just for this single trophy. So annoying. Please stop doing these. Oh, and speaking of that Final Fantasy VII Remake hard trophy, number three, trophies where you have to unlock the difficulty first. 
in Final Fantasy VII Remake, you can't even select hard mode until you beat the game once. So you have to go through multiple times. What a pain in the ass. Give me that choice. The Uncharted series is one of my favorite series on the PlayStation. I absolutely love it. I love the characters. They are such great games. But what aren't great is not only are the trophy lists lacking, every single game requires you to finish it on crushing difficulty, which in its own is a big pain in the ass already. But what's even worse is that you have to unlock crushing first on normal. Why? Give me the option to knock it out in one go. That just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, it just feels like unnecessary padding, but padding why? I've already paid for the game. What more are you getting out of it if I sit there and have to run through it three or four more times? Gah! Number four, missable trophies. Honestly, I think these should just be done away with as best as possible. I get that you have to make the game you want to make, and something like a game like Persona 5, you know, the idea of that game is that you are going through this school year, so they don't really want to have a chapter select where you can go back and grab some of the trophies you may have missed. But something like South Park The Stick of Truth is just loaded with missable trophies. And it's absurd that because for something like Daywalker, where it involves the ginger, the ginger uh, bully kid at this during the school section because you might miss that trophy early on that if you finish this game you would have to start the entire thing over to go through and get that point again that one at least you could get it and stop but what about collecting some of the chin pokemon some of which are missable in the school and other places that you can't return to later so again that one you have to get them all in one gameplay so if you miss one of those have fun going through the entire game again collecting all of those it just doesn't make sense. Like, as much as you can avoid them, please stop putting missable trophies in your game. Have chapter select, have post-game cleanup, you know, whatever. Obviously, different design mentalities fit different games, but there, there's nothing worse than, again, missing one weapon or one item or whatever early, and then now you have to start the entire game over again just to knock that out. Number five, secret trophies. <laughs> Now, I have no issue with trophies that are secret that pertain to the story. You know, when you're looking through the trophy list, the last thing you want to see is, oh, by the way, here's this trophy that spoils the end of the game. Yeah, thanks. No, I'm talking about non-story trophies. You know, we can kind of use South Park as another example. There are multiple trophies dealing with defeating Kenny and in different ways you have to do that. Now, again, I understand that, you know, that's the end of the game and so they don't necessarily want to spoil that. But, you know, something like, the face-off where you have to defeat Kenny with David Hasselhoff's face on. Again, if you miss that and you didn't make a save beforehand, you've got to go through the entire game again just to get that. Now, luckily, nowadays on the PS4 and hopefully the PS5, you can actually reveal the hidden secret trophies to yourself. So you can check on them, but that didn't used to be a feature. So that was a pain in the ass. But nonetheless, Secret trophies should only be for story-based stuff. There are plenty of games I've seen where it's just some random objective you have to do. It's like, ah, 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 it's a secret trophy. Why? It doesn't spoil anything. Just tell me. Number six, anti-gameplay trophies. Oh, man. So Fall Guys came out this last year and... Could this have a more anti-gameplay trophy? And what I mean by that is that trophies that basically require you to play the game in a way that just honestly doesn't make much sense and seems to go against the spirit of it. So in Fall Guys, the most infamous trophy from that is called Infallible. It requires you to win five shows in a row, which is frankly just insane. It's one of those trophies that not only are you going to have to have an insane amount of skill, but also quite a bit of luck on your hand, too, to hopefully not get screwed over by any team games, you know, hackers in the game, or anything else of that nature. And it's funny because, to me, that trophy was the main arguing point I used against people who would say, well, it's just a fun game. You know, it's not supposed to be competitive. It's supposed to be fun and relaxing. It's not competitive. Then why is the biggest trophy in the game you have to win five in a row without failing? That's insanely competitive. Like, it shouldn't be competitive. It should just be a fun little game you play for fun. But no, like, it has this competitive trophy lording over everything. Oh, you want that? You're going to have to, you know, be the best of the best. 
Another great example of this is in Nino Kuni 2, which is a great RPG, but there's a trophy in it called Royal Mint, which requires you to have half a million Gelders, the money in the game, saved up at once. It doesn't count a cumulative total of what you've had. So in order that you can't spend it, you can't spend money in an RPG. And get this, I kid you not, when I beat that game, I only had 400,000 Gelders. I didn't even have it complete. I beat the game and I still hadn't retained this trophy. Like, why make something like that? Why make an RPG where, oh, you can't spend money or, you know, a game where, oh, you, you, you missed one single weapon. So that's too bad. Like, that's not how the game works. A special shout out too to the Wanted game from PS3 with the Butcher Would Be Proud trophy. This is a third person shooting game and there's a trophy that requires you to complete the game in close combat mode. Yes, because that's what I want to do in a third person shooter is just going around meleeing everybody. Like these trophies are so against the gameplay, they drive me crazy. Number seven, luck based trophies. <laughs> Oh man, these suck so much. The first one that comes to mind is MLB The Show 13. There's a trophy called Strike Em Out, Throw Em Out, which requires you to get a strikeout on the batter. You're the defensive team. You have to strike out the batter and then throw out someone stealing, trying to steal second base. It's a really cool play to see in actual baseball, but in the game, it's insane. So what has to happen is, first of all, you have to get a runner to first. Okay, you can walk them. Then you have to make them, this is the computer controlling it by the way, the computer has to decide to steal second base and they have to do it on a two strike count only. Then the batter has to strike out while the computer is choosing to steal and then your players have to throw them out and make the tag. And even with completely maxed out stats and sliders, I had to try this for hours before I just lucked into it working. It's just so silly because you have no control over this. It doesn't make any sense. And we'll touch on Nino Kuni 2 again. The worst trophy in that game is called God of War where you have to complete 50 of the skirmishes. Well, the skirmishes themselves aren't bad, but guess what? They randomly show up on the map. So. If they don't spawn, you just have to go in and out of a town over and over and over again, just waiting for them to load. Is that fun? Is that enjoyable? Like, am I getting something out of that as a player? No, it's this trophy that's just completely out of my hands. Or how about Bioshock? One of my favorite games that I believe was my fourth platinum ever way back in like 2009 or 10. And I recently did the remastered version as well on the PS4. And there's a trophy called Lucky Winner where you have to get a jackpot in the Fort Frolic slot machines. Uh, guess what? It's complete luck. This time I sat there for about three hours before it lucked into giving it to me. I can't stand luck-based trophies. Of all the trophies on the list, this one might be the most irritating. And the funny thing is, some people really don't mind these because guess what, they're lucky. Oh, I'll get jackpot, you know, on the second or third spin, so no big deal to me, what an easy trophy. But for people like me, who I guess have awful luck and I'm just sitting there like, oh my goodness, I just have no control. Cannot stand these trophies, please get rid of them. Number eight. Participation or Community Trophies? Man, I love Little Big Planet. I was so happy when that game came out in 2008. I thought it was so cute and so charming, and I was so excited for the Create Mode. The trophies, on the other hand, are something else. The biggest one is a gold trophy called Create, and it requires... <laughs> it basically requires a ton of people to heart you as a creator and heart the levels you play. And again, it's just, it's something beyond, beyond your control other than just sitting there begging users to, you know, please heart for heart, which is basically what most people resorted to. Because unless you just happen to make some standout level that gets promoted and pushed to the top, you know, you're just not going to get that. It, it's just so insane. And again, it's this idea of it's taking it out of your hands. Who wants a trophy, an extra achievement that you have no power over? How, how is that enjoyable? And how does that make the game better? And it's frustrating and it takes away from it. Number nine, online trophies in a single player game. I'm going to use Bioshock 2 as an example for this one because while I like that game, 
The multiplayer trophies for that are ridiculous, especially Choose the Impossible, which requires you to get, a rank, get to rank 40 in Bioshock 2's online multiplayer, which I did because I'm a madman, I suppose. But again, it's a neat little multiplayer mode, but I think of that as a single player game, like that very mode, that multiplayer very much felt tacked on. And yet it probably takes more time to do that than any of the single player stuff does in Bioshock 2. Thankfully, this, this was eliminated in the remaster, but the other issue with these trophies is that when you add these online trophies, you can lock people out of getting the Platinums because eventually those servers are gonna go down. There are plenty of games already that Platinums are no longer attainable in them because, oh, they've got a you know one online trophy that's gonna keep you from getting it. Or hell, what about Lord of the Rings Conquest? A neat little game that came out back in 2008, 2009, and I was never able to get the Platinum because the online servers didn't work. I couldn't connect, so I couldn't get the like three or four trophies I needed from the online. So that is a game I'm just locked out of a Platinum forever because, sorry, the online servers weren't working. You know, you snooze, you lose. Ugh, please no. Please have a work around them. Some games are good about having like an offline version or something else you can do to avoid this but yeah what a pain number 10 difficulty trophies but they don't stack i mean of all the ones on the list this one is just so silly the otherwise excellent Kingdom Hearts 1.5 Remix, which was a remaster of Kingdom Hearts from PS2 on the PS3, it was so nice to revisit this game. But guess what? The difficulty trophies don't stack. Yeah, even though you might have beat it on Super Hard or Proud Mode or whatever it's called, it didn't unlock the trophy for beating it on Easy. <laughs> what? <laughs> what kind of sense does that make? There's a reason almost all games have stacking difficulty trophies, because if I beat it on Hard or I beat it on Normal, Obviously, I can beat it on easy. What kind of developer thought, no, 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 hold on. Now, I, I know he proved his worth on the super hard mode, but what about when he's got infinite lies and he takes no damage and he knocks all the enemies out in one hit, huh? Huh? Yeah, he ain't gonna beat that one. Oh, give me a break. Don't make me play through that multiple times. If I beat it on hard, I beat it on everything. Just give me the trophies. Hey everybody, that's the list. Thanks for watching. What are some of your favorite trophies and what are ones you think are also just absolutely terrible? I've got a few others in mind, so maybe I'll need to make a second ver a second part to this video, but for right now, enjoy and we appreciate you being around. Get those platinums, baby.